To all God's people of the Great Plains Conference, grace and peace to you from God our Maker and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to speak with you today about what it means to be a Christian people of faith, hope, and love in the Wesleyan tradition in a time of pandemic. As I speak to you through a virtual platform, I think about how each and every one of you are doing and how you are responding to our current situation in so many strong and compassionate ways during this pandemic. I pray that the Lord strengthens you as you hold things together for your families, your churches, and your communities. So many of our loved ones and people near and far in our world are hurting. The existential threat of a viral infection and possibility of death has opened people to ask deeper questions about the meaning and value of life, peace, and justice. People who had given up on God and the church are turning again to the church for spiritual comfort and assistance. The Spirit of God is awakening the church to see and respond to a hurting world. Many of our congregations are reporting a multiplication of people they are now reaching through hands-on ministry and social media platforms. I hear inspirational stories all the time from your district superintendents of how you as clergy, laity, together as congregations are offering God's consolation and strength through in-person and online messages, sacred music, Bible studies, your presence, caring words and actions, and by engaging in healthy dialogue about topics and issues of public concern. You are encouraging and supporting our communities by organizing activities such as drive-by blessing of the backpacks for children and outdoor movie nights. You are feeding the hungry and staying connected with the vulnerable. In these difficult times, you remain loyal to sustain the ministry of your local church and the United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness. We have been in pandemic mode now for seven months. The world as we knew it has changed, not over the span of our lifetime, but over the course of a few short months before our very eyes. The confluence of the postponement of General Conference, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the incidences of racial injustice we have seen in videos have created an atmosphere of chronic stress and uncertainty in our lives, our church, our communities, and world. Stress and uncertainty over troublesome present and unknown future creates generalized social anxiety, panic, and fears of scarcity. We are each struggling in our own ways and as an interdependent human community to come to terms with the grief we are experiencing over what we have lost and anticipate losing. We are in a wilderness, reluctantly adapting from one way of living into another. A fiery crucible overflowing with disruptions, threats, and unrest has served to purify our identity and human connections as Christians, as United Methodists, and as citizens of a global community. While the troubles and struggles of our world intensely swirl all around us, we do not dismay or fear because we are a people of the new birth in Christ. John Wesley, in his sermon, The Marks of the New Birth, says that the three marks of the new birth are faith, hope, and love. The first mark is faith, not solely as an assent to a propositional truth, but a living faith that is an inward disposition that God creates in our hearts. It is an abiding faith that gives us peace amid the tumults of life. It is a faith in the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. This faith is a gift from God that enables us to expect God's power to bring life-giving transformation in human hearts, reconciling us to God and each other, removing all divisions between race, gender, class, and creating a new humanity. The second mark of the new birth is a blessed hope that we are children of God, and as such, heirs of the kingdom of heaven that God promises and keeps. This hope rests on the conviction that God who is faithful yesterday, today, is the same one that will keep the future where all the broken and bent pieces of our world will be made new, where new life will spring forth from dead places and where nations are healed. 
This hope is a virtue that must be practiced when things in the world are volatile, chaotic, uncertain, and oppressed with anxiety. Our hope is anchored in the conviction that God can be trusted to sort things out and that God can be true and will be true to God's promises. Our hope tells us what to do and who we should be. It causes us to remember not only our past but our future, reminding us that what we do now affects others now and for generations to come. The third mark of the new birth, and the greatest of all, says Jesus Christ our Lord, the Apostle Paul and John Wesley, is of course love. Wesley defines the nature of great love like this. The necessary fruit of this love of God is a love of our neighbor. Every soul which God has made, not accepting our enemies, a love whereby we love everyone as ourselves, as we love our own souls. The love of neighbor is an act of obedience to God's commandments and it conforms to God's will. Our love of God, says Wesley, makes us zealous of good works. We hunger and thirst to do good in every possible way unto all persons, rejoicing to spend and to be spent for every child of humanity, not looking for any recompense in this world, but only for the resurrection of the just. Wesley ends his sermon on the marks of the new birth with an admonition to seek God's face again, to receive faith anew for power over sin and evil, a living and purifying hope, and a new cleansing spirit of God's love that perfects us in holiness and awe of God. We will move forward as a Great Plains Conference into an uncertain year growing in faith, grounded in hope, despite discouraging facts, and generous in love. The foundational virtues of our discipleship for Christ and for Christ's transforming power in the world. We will grow deeper and wider in faith. The foundation of our spiritual life is a high notion of the Spirit of God in us, which brings us great joy in our devotion to Him. The faith and trust we put in God honors God and draws down great graces for our time of need, said Brother Lawrence, a 16th century Carmelite lay brother. We will grow our faith in God by grounding ourselves in praise and adoration of God's faithfulness, rejoicing in the Lord always, regardless of our circumstances. The Apostle Paul put it this way, For I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it's like to have little, and I know what it's like to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We will grow deep and wide in our faith by engaging in the spiritual practices of in-person and online worship, meditating upon scripture, prayer, a supplication for ourselves and for the world, reading and listening to spiritual resources, and spiritual journaling. We will be grounded in hope and be a beacon of hope for a hurting world. Our 1,000 congregations in frontier, rural, urban, and suburban areas will be beacons of hope for our communities and regions where people can dream God's dreams of better tomorrows and a more promising prospect of life for themselves and their families. Imagine how our world could be transformed if we helped the child read at grade level by the third grade. Research shows that children that read at grade level by the third grade drastically improve their socioeconomic and physical well-being as adults. Imagine how our world could be transformed if our churches became welcoming and supportive places that play a strong role in the spiritual recovery process for people and families struggling with mental illness like depression, anxiety, and addictions. Imagine how our world could be transformed if our business community and investors came together to help unemployed and underemployed residents develop business plans, and then attain microloans to fund and launch their own new sustainable and profitable businesses. Imagine how our world could be transformed if more of our congregations started a community garden on their property to build social ties with community residents that create trust, overcome differences, and celebrate social and economic diversities. 
while at the same time addressing hunger and poverty in sustainable ways. We will grow in gracious love. Our churches must be places of loving welcome and belonging. Imagine how our world would be transformed if we who are already part of our churches grow and reflect to a deeply divided world of practice and example of mutual kindness, of respect and dignity, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bonds of peace bearing with one another in love. Imagine how our growth in love of neighbor will transform people, transform their lives and hearts that are not yet part of our churches through their experience of our outreaching love, goodness, and kindness. Imagine how our world would be transformed when clergy, laity, and congregations are equipped with a biblical and theological guidance to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. This can be done and should be done with regard to contemporary issues and topics in service to the common good, especially as it pertains to the vulnerable among us. As disciples that faithfully attend to God's word, we will have the confidence to advocate for peaceable and just communities and a world making us one with God, one with each other, and one in mission and ministry to the world until Christ returns and we feast at his heavenly banquet. In closing, God, God has our work cut out for us, friends. All of these actions the Spirit calls us to for such a time as this are bare minimums in our service to Christ in and for a broken and bent world in search of peace with God, with self, and with neighbor. While the work that God calls us to may be difficult, the rewards will be great. Our vision for the Great Plains Conference is to be great churches who develop great leaders and great disciples that transform the world for Jesus Christ. The practices of faith, hope, and love I described above will make us great churches because we will be actively and relevantly engaged in our mission fields in the things that matter to people and that seek the common good. Through exposure to effective leaders, growth in the knowledge of the work of God's church and mission in the world, opportunities for active learning and mentoring and coaching, uh, volunteering, and opportunities for leading initiatives, we will develop great leaders for service to the church and the world. And as we delve deeper into our personal faith journeys and collectively as congregations, seeking to follow Jesus' teachings and examples of a life passionately devoted to God, yet in humble service to humanity, we will develop into great disciples. Taken together, greatness as churches, greatness as leaders, and greatness as disciples will empower us to do what Jesus authorized and commissioned us to do, that is, to be instruments and agents of God's transformation of people and systems to the gospel as we move toward the fullness of God's peaceable reign over all creation. That is yet one more change in our ever-changing world that we would humbly yet joyfully welcome, isn't it? You are always in my thoughts and prayers as you give witness for Christ in your corner of the world, serve as a light in the darkness, as leaven for peace and justice, and a reconciler in a culture of conflict. May the peace of Jesus Christ always be with your spirit.